Hi Tubies and welcome to my first painting tutorial in 2012. This time we will have a look at an ogre. You see I have built him already, erased all the mold lines and glued him to the base. So, and I will prime him now with a, a spray primer from Army Painter. Um, uniform Grey. So, be right back in a second. Okay, Tubies, the ogre is primed now. You can see that at the base. And, well, I get very often the question about the primer. Why do we prime? Well, it's kind of obvious. The uh, primer itself has a good tendency to hold uh, on the miniature, and when you stick paint on that, the paint itself will also stick very well. If you uh, take a miniature without priming uh, and paint on it, the paint will chip off quite easy. So, with a primer, uh, the miniature itself is uh, much better protected. Well, the paint job is much better protected. On the other hand, uh, I get often questions like, uh, oh, in your tutorial you primed in grey, uh, can I use a black or white primer instead? Yes, you can. Of course you can. Um, the uh, primer I choose for my miniatures um, mostly depends on the paint job I'm going to uh, apply to the miniature. If I have a miniature that is uh, supposed to be very dark in the end, then I go with a black spray primer or a very dark colored spray primer in the appropriate color. Or <clears throat> when I want to have a really, really bright miniature or maybe a yellow one or something like that, then I will use a white spray primer. But for most cases, the gray spray primer is, um, well, kind of a, a neutral primer. So um, I figured out that's uh, one of the best primers you can get. So that's why I'm uh, using him. And uh, Army Painter primers are very good primers. As you can see here, no detail is uh, destroyed by the primer and it's well covered. So, um, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm painting in the skin tone. I'm using here a GW paint, Terracotta. I guess this uh, paint doesn't um, exist anymore. So, uh, you could also use just Dark Flash or mix uh, Bestial Brown with a little bit of red in it or take Snake Butt Leather and uh, mix in Scab Red so that you uh, get a reddish brown tone, you see. That I want to have uh, for a base coat for my uh, skin tone. So, just simply uh, add the color on your palette a little bit water to it, <clears throat> and then start to apply it to the skin of the miniature. Very easy step. So, you see how I do it? Quite easy. And uh, here and there you see that uh, the gray spray primer is still uh, coming through. That's not a big deal. Uh, you just simply wait for um, the color to dry and then go over it with a thin layer a second time and then it will uh, cover. Very good. So, I will finish up uh, the skin tone job and be right back in a second. Okay, Tubies. While the first layer of skin tone is drying, we can apply a first layer on the trousers and for that I use Mordian Blue, the foundation paint. Also, very easy step, just simply paint it on. Be right back. Okie dokie, the blue is applied and now it's time for the leather parts to be undercoated and for that I use Calthan Brown, the foundation paint, and for that I paint here now the boots, then uh, this little belt here around uh, the whole ogre and uh, the parts here on the knife, a little bit of uh, the wrapping on the blade on his weapon. So, and I'll be right back when this is done. There we have it, all the browns for the leather parts, like the belts and shoes, <coughs> are applied and also I've gone ahead and uh, painted the wooden part of the weapon in scorched brown. And what I will do now is uh, paint all the metal parts on the model with a 50-50 mixture of tin bits and bolt gun metal as an undercoat color. So, 
and uh, I think after that uh, the whole miniature is covered with the main colors and we can start with the uh, shadowing and highlighting of the miniature. So you can see how this uh, color looks like and well we see us when this is done. Okay there we have it now all the main colors are blocked out and now it's time to give it a little bit shading. We will start with a skin tone and for that we use Griffon Sepia <coughs> and we want in the deep recesses a little bit more shadow so for example here at the neck parts a little bit through the face Okay, like that. Just the deepest recesses. The other parts uh, of the skin are, um, well, plain enough that uh, this dark tone is, well, dark enough. <coughs> well, here at the hands we can apply that also. There we have deep recesses. And, uh, well, maybe here at the leather wrapping around his weapon. So, and after that we will take a look at the metal parts and for that we will use part up black wash like usual. <coughs> so, There we have it. I'm sorry in uh, previously if I uh, get out of focus with this miniature. Well, it's a little bit big for completely fitting here and under the camera, but well, I'll try my best. So, yeah, that's looking good. <coughs> Wash out the brush. And then where we have our put up black, if I can find it, please. That's not it, or green flesh. No, that's a summer blue. No, that's also not. Damn it, where's my... No. no. Yeah. Ah, let's take this before we find another one. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> let's go for the metal parts. Just simply cover it good with a black wash. So we have nice and dark recesses here at the plate here in front. <clears throat> then the armor here. Not too much on the uh, on the plane surfaces like this one here, just in the recesses enough so we have a black line there, and a little bit over the surface so we have a darker a darker tone. <coughs> so. like that. So, then the helmet. And remember, if you have too much applied on one surface, you can always uh, soak it back up with a brush. You have control over the color where it needs to go. Especially underneath here. <coughs> A little bit more. And let the wash do the rest. It will flow into the recesses on its own. So. Also here a little. 
weapon. Yeah, that's good. And all of a sudden we have much more three-dimensionality to this whole miniature by just applying a little bit of wash. If you haven't tried it yet, well, give it a try. You may wonder what nice results you can achieve by this little handy dandy color. So also the boots we will now cover <coughs> completely. I want uh, really dark and dirty boots, so don't be shy on that part. So, like that. And you see the droplets here. <laughs> be sure you have something uh, to, protect, to protect your table. Otherwise, you will have a really big mess over time on the surface you are painting on. <coughs> okay, dokie. I think that's enough wash for this moment. And we will let that dry and be back when this is done. Until then. Okay, dokie. The wash is dry now. And it's time to take a look at the skin tone. So, as you can see, the skin tone was previously painted in terracotta or in your own mixture of skin tone if you don't have the terracotta. <coughs> well, now I will start to highlight uh, the skin with a 50-50 mix of uh, the previous color. So in my case, terracotta, in your case, your own mixture. And I have added uh, dwarf flesh to the mixture and I will paint in now the main upper parts for the skin and leave the recesses in the dark tone and as you can see the uh, skin tone is quite thin <coughs> thin down but uh, well that's okay that it don't covers 100% because we will go over it over and over again with several, several layers and uh, in the end you won't notice it. So, quite easy, just simply paint it on and leave the recesses in the other color. So, I will finish this up and be right back. Okay, Cubies, there you can see now the first layer of highlight is applied. And you see it's uh, still quite cloudy, but don't get yourself uh, to stop at this point because uh, many people get frustrated because, um, because of this kind of outcome here. Just keep painting and it will get better. So, um, here's my skin tone now and I will uh, go ahead and highlight with even more dwarf flesh into the paint. And also, of course, some water. A little bit more. Over time you will uh, get a hand for it, uh, how much water you need in your paint. So, don't worry, you will learn that over time. So, <coughs> then of course wash your brush and take up only that amount of paint. And also wipe it off on a paper towel a little bit. So, and now we will go ahead and highlight even more. So, let's zoom in here, so you have a better look. And what I will do now is go over this uh, same highlighted areas and leave a little bit of the other color, color behind. And you see, out of a sudden, this area is less cloudy than before. <coughs> Just simply paint it on. Like that. It's quite easy. And use just the tip of the brush, barely touching, very gently going over the surface. And the skin st structure beginning to show. <coughs> See? So 
are same applies for the face. You can see I've painted in the first color layer and now uh, highlight even more. Just with the tip of the brush. Very gently. So, like that. Okay. I will finish up this job now on the whole ogre and be right back. So, this step is also done, as you can see. And now it's time to use pure dwarf flash. Same scheme as before, just simply apply it and leave a little bit of the old color behind so you get a nice color transition. Quite easy. Like before, use only the tip of the brush. And <clears throat> of course the paint is a little bit watered down. So you get a better paint flow and you don't have two thick layers of paint on the miniature. Just like that. <coughs> okay, I will finish up the rest and be right back. The skin starts to look like skin already. The next highlight step will be Elf Flash. And same as before, just simply paint it on. And the highlight steps get faster and faster because uh, <laughs> there is not very much you uh, have to paint on because well, you're getting closer and closer to the middle of the uh, muscle strands. Yeah, it's, it's quite easy. Just simply paint it on like that. Leave the old color behind the dwarf flesh so you get a nice transition. <coughs> and overall, the skin will look good. Okay, okay. Yeah, I know the uh, thing I'm doing here is not uh, competition quality. Well, that's just tabletop quality I'm painting here. But, well, the uh, main amount of my subscribers are quite new painters. And so that's the paint job for them. If you want to uh, see really super high quality paint jobs, then you should definitely watch uh, the videos from Judge Kutch or from Les from Awesome Paint Job. There you get taught how to paint like competition standard. I'm quite good in painting, but not so good. <laughs> I'm just good at teaching. So, <coughs> now we will go for the final highlights. And for that, uh, we will add a little bit of white to the paint. So, just this little amount. Yeah, that's good. Okay. <coughs> and just the paint brush tip. And so we will now uh, make the last highlights. Here on top of his breast. So, like that. Then here on the muscles. Just a little bit. So. Yeah, that's good. close up you will definitely see the uh, color transitions but that's not what we are aiming for we are aiming for a, a skin tone that will look good uh, from well maybe two feet away when you observe the battlefield and look at a whole regiment of those big guys and <coughs> well then this will look good okay okay Slightly on the hands here. And 
and I think yes, we are done. So this needs to dry a little bit now and then I'm back. Hit you is the skin tone is basically done but uh, we will fade the transitions even more and for that we use now Ogren Flash but you could also use Griffon Sepia or Devlin Mud. Totally depends on personal preference and taste. So what we will do now is uh, take our Ogren Flash Wash. We have here a little bit in the lid of the pot and we will add there a little bit of water. So we will water it down. Just well, that's enough. Okay. And with that, we will go over the skin tone now. Over the skin. <clears throat> and we will glaze the skin with it. So that means we will uh, fade out the color transitions even more. So we want just to uh, go over the main surface. We don't want to uh, have pools on the um, on the big surfaces. We just want to uh, give a little bit uh, color correction on the skin tone with this. So just slightly go over it and let the color transition, <coughs> the colors fade in together. And then voila, we get a nice, nice skin tone. hairs on the model. That's not good. <coughs> Here a little bit more on the arms. Okay. And so it does look now. Here we have a little bit more pool we can get rid of. Yeah, that's good. <coughs> So, this needs to dry now, and then we will have a look at the trousers. Okay, there I'm back, and now it's time to work a little bit on the trousers. And for that, I take, uh, like previously, Mordian Blue, and I will highlight it with Astronomical Grey. <coughs> so, here you can see the color. And about that is the amount I want in there. Yeah, that looks good. And also, like usual, whoops, a little bit of water <coughs> into the paint. So that's, that's our color, color mixture now. Wash the brush. And let's go on painting. And like at the skin before, just simply paint over the surface and leave the recesses in the darker color. Quite easy. You don't need it. Uh, need to uh, make it here so 100% exact, like at the skin tone. It's uh, <coughs> not so bad if you make it a little bit rough at the trousers. That indicates even more the um, the surface that it is not a glancing surface. <coughs> Add a little bit uh, of wet brushing here. Okay. A little bit at the front. 
front. There we go. And the first layer is done. Then again a little bit more of astronomical grey. Also just a little bit the tip of the brush. Also a little bit water, just a tiny bit. So make a little bit better flow. So and up to the next layer. Trousers, you can work quite fast here. Okay, now I will also highlight the part up here. <coughs> Be aware not to hit the skin. Final highlight for the main parts of the trousers. Also, again, a little bit more of the astronomical grey. Adjust the brush tip and again going over it. We got really nice blue trousers, quite easy. <coughs> so now we'll uh, work in a little bit of shadows. <coughs> I could have done this uh, previously, but I will. I just wanted to show you that you can do this also afterwards. And all I use here is just simply uh, a summon blue wash. So. Just hit the recesses with it a little bit. So, like that. <coughs> also here. Okay, now wash out the brush and we'll fade it a little bit so that we don't get blobs on the main parts. Okay, and I guess <coughs> the ogre is almost done. <coughs> hmm, let's have a look at the beard. Uh, we will make him a dark brown beard. So let's prime it first in black. So like that. Try not to, to hit the other parts of the face. Okay, and now we take Scotch Brown. Hmm. 
<coughs> gently going over it like that. So okay, <coughs> and now we will mix in some snake butt leather. <coughs> the beard is done. So now we will paint the teeth and the fingernails. <coughs> and for that we just take bleach bone. Okay. Just simply barely touching. Complain, and his teeth are painted. <coughs> and now for the fingernails, same. <coughs> Side, there are no, <coughs> but we can paint some in. Let's guess they are there. So, like that. Ta da! <coughs> so, now let's paint in the eyes, and for that, I also use my bleached bone. Now I need a black dot in each eye. Okay. <laughs> Very careful. Hmm. Okay, this one was a little bit too big, so I have to do it again. Bone. Oh, that's better. <coughs> and the black again. Like that. Okay. Now he has eyes, and hmm, everything is painted now. So. <coughs> So for tabletop standard, uh, he is done now. Um, I will now make the base, like usual. I will add white glue, put it through some sand and uh, paint it with a wash. And I'll be right back when this is done. There I am back again. After I have sanded the base, I have given it a wash with Devlin mud and let it dry. So now I will dry brush the surface with some snake butt leather. Well, it's actually a heavy dry brush I'm using here, or wet brushing. So, just take a big brush and go over it with a snake butt leather. Go. <clears throat> now I will drive the surface again with a vomit brown. So this time really dry brushing, so 
get rid of most of the excess paint on the brush and then going over it let's zoom out a little bit okay <coughs> and uh, you can stop with it uh, at any time when you're pleased with the uh, uh, outcome Many people don't like it when it is uh, too bright dry brushed. Some people like it. It's personal taste. <clears throat> now I'll make a 50-50 mix of the vomit brown and bleached bone. And also then dry brushing the surface with it. <clears throat> Very gently now. that there's a nice structure now in the whole set and that's what we are looking for so now I will uh, paint the base corner um, you can uh, paint it in any color you like uh, some people paint it in brown some people paint it in black or green <coughs> well I like uh, to paint my bases with a black corner so I will just went ahead and Paint it black. Like that. So. Basically, now when this layer here is done, <coughs> the miniature is battle ready. So that would be good and nice tabletop quality but I um, want to go a little bit further with this miniature and so um, I'll be back in a second when the base is dry and we will give this a little bit more detail okie dokie the base is uh, dry now and uh, now I want to rust up the metal parts here a little bit because ogres are not uh, so well known for their uh, perfect blacksmiths so what I have here is a little bit uh, of pigment, uh, Vallejo pigments I use here, burnt umber. And uh, I will just put in some alcohol, so not 99% alcohol, no this is just simple uh, plain vodka. <laughs> so <clears throat> I use this because, well, it's cheap and um, it dries a little bit faster than uh, water and it has a little bit uh, other tendencies uh, to it than water, other flow <coughs> stuff. So just simply uh, go now over the metal areas like here on the weapon or the helmet then with this mixture and give it a nice matte brown patina like there's a rust layer over it so like that <coughs> also the helmet so just like that There's a little bit too much at the arm, but with a wet brush, slightly wet brush, clean one, you can wipe this off. Okay, this needs to dry now, and uh, well, <coughs> <coughs> also here at the feet. And I'll be right back in a second. Okay, the pigments are dry now. As you can see, there we have a nice brown rusty patina over the surfaces and now we will uh, clean up this a little bit with a um, makeup applicator so make it slightly wet just slightly and then simply go over it here and there and remove a little bit of the 
pigments so that the metal shows off again. Not everywhere, just here and there. So, like that. And for example here the whole blade along. On the weapon. To make the metal reappear. to have uh, some shiny scratches in them and for that I take again a little bit of boulder and metal on the palette then wipe off the brush quite good almost like you would dry brush but not so much and then I simply make some scratches here and there you see? Also here on the outside line. <coughs> to give it a nice used touch to it. Also here a little strokes here and there. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay. <coughs> now we want some more. <coughs> Sorry some more rust dots and for that I use another Vallejo pigment uh, dark red ochre I already have that here on the palette just use a little bit of water to loosen it again so and we'll dab it here and there to indicate some nice rusty spots don't overdo it Some spots here at the <coughs> at this little recesses. So, and with just a little bit more effort, this miniature looks quite realistic. <coughs> and fearsome. So, I think for the rust parts, this is enough. Yeah, so now let's go for the plate here, the chest plate. Um, this one I want to have in a copper tone, but uh, also <coughs> beat up and uh, very old, so I will Reprime it a little bit uh, over brushing with tin bits, just a little bit, so just like that. So then I use dwarf bronze, <coughs> and sorry for my coffin all the time here. I'm, I have a little bit of cold right now. <coughs> well, the weather is pretty bad outside. That's quite usual here in Solingen in Germany. So, like that. Yeah, that looks good. And, well, I'll let that dry here and be right back in a second. Okay, the plate is now dry, and what I have here is a tiny little bit of uh, 
uh, blue green from Vallejo, this one here, but you could also use hawk turquoise for it or any other, other turquoise color. And I will water it down quite a lot. Like that. And then I will go over the surface and voila, this will create in the recesses this nice turquoisey green patina that <coughs> bronze is famous for. And while this is still wet, I clean up the brush <coughs> and I will go over the main surface again and wipe off most of the excess. So like that. <coughs> and voila, we have a nice oxidated bronze plate. So <coughs> now it's time for the base to give a little bit more decoration. I will use uh, some static grass and grass flock and maybe a little bit of Iceland moss and well, I'll show you the end result when this is done. Okay, Tubies, there we have him now in his full glory with a nice decorative base, all rusted up, all painted. And I hope you liked this tutorial and you could follow the steps. And we see us in the next video. Yeah, Alexandra.